if you don't know me yet, I cry very easily. Like a really good refrigerator commercial, it'll get me in the feels. So, um, yeah. So the fact that I was praying with somebody and bawling my eyes out this morning, that is not abnormal. So if you ever see me walk around here, I'm crying. It's a Tuesday or a Monday or just a normal day for me. Plus, it's Baptism Sunday, and I'm already in my feels about today. I don't know about you guys, but I love Baptism Sunday. It just, it's fantastic. I've been reminiscing all week, kind of leading up to this, not just about my baptism, which was many moons ago, and we don't discuss how long ago that was, but also that I have had the privilege of watching my kids get baptized, and then three years ago, I had the privilege of actually getting to baptize one of my sons. Oh my goodness, tissues again, this is silly. And two of his friends. It was a beautiful day, and you, you know it had to be a really important day because they got me in a lake. I don't like lakes. They're beautiful, but I don't like to be in them because that's like swimming in somebody else's living room, and it's just things live in there. And I could go really on for a long time about lakes and how gross they are, but so here I am standing in a lake to baptize these wonderful young men who requested that I baptize them. And it was such a beautiful moment. And oddly, I don't think I cried at that moment because I was just so like, this is awesome. And I actually, one of the little boys is here visiting us. And it's really exciting to see these kids grow up and uh, to be part of that. So I've been walking down memory lane um, with my husband out of town this morning. I get to come to you and speak about baptism Um, This is different than most worship services for people who maybe don't know church very well. Normally, this is the main event. This right here is not the main event today. This is the main event, and it's going to be awesome, and I'm very excited and looking forward. But today, so today isn't going to be typical sermon. This is more education and reminder for people. Because there's a significance of this moment And so I'm pretty sure that I wasn't the only one who's been walking down that memory lane. I bet some of you today might bring back memories of your baptism, your children's baptism, those close to you. You may be walking down that memory lane or even just like me, anticipating the celebration that's coming. Some of you, though, might be asking, what's the big deal? Like, why do do Christians still do this? Isn't this like this archaic ritual that's kind of creepy and weird, like... You're putting people in a water, and you think that's going to change them. Um, So I thought that today I would bring some clarity, because if you've been going here long, you know that we like to remind people that Christianity is not about a list of do's and don'ts. Like, we don't have a a to-do list for you. Like, you're a Christian. Congratulations. Here's your manual, and now you're going to check things off. So it might feel like that's what people are doing today, where they are saying, baptism, baptism check, done. That's not what's happening. So we're going to dive into this just for a few minutes, and then we'll get to the fun of, as my son calls it, the giant bathtub. The first thing I would like to say about baptism to answer why do we do this, because I answer a lot of why questions at home, because Jesus said so. As a parent, I say that a lot, because I said so. I don't really said because Jesus said so. Sometimes I throw that one out. But for this moment, I'm going to look at you and say, because Jesus said so. The Christian life is about following Jesus and obeying his commands. And in Matthew 28, 19, Jesus gives us what we know in the Christian world as the Great Commission. He says, therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. But what does he mean? When he says baptize them, like, was that a new phrase that he's popping out there? Like, were they standing there going, what does baptize mean? Like, why would he say do that? Actually, it wasn't anything new. Um, It was something that different religious sects had um, a common practice in doing this. It was seen as like a public declaration of your new allegiance with this teacher or your new alliance with this thinking. Um, Jews baptized, they generally viewed viewed baptism as a rite for Gentile converts, not for somebody who was born a Jew, but who was a Gentile. It symbolized the breaking away from your Gentile past and the washing away of defilement. Um, In fact, if you've been with us on the journey through the Gospel of John, 
we've seen that Jesus himself was baptized by none other than his cousin. We know him as John the Baptist. They called him John the Baptizer. If you watch The Chosen, you might know him as Crazy John. John's message was getting ready to, God's getting ready to do something, and it's not enough to be a Jew and follow or obey the law. You need to get right with God. So even that baptism wasn't the Christian baptism that we're talking about. It was a baptism of, of repentance, a full-body cleansing of yourself before the Lord, if you will. But Christian baptism is not only a public proclamation of your faith in Jesus, of saying, I'm going to align myself with his teaching. It's the ultimate object lesson of our Christian faith. So this is us acting out what's happening in our hearts and in our lives. You go into the water and you're buried in your death to sin with Christ. And then when you come out of the water, you're raised to new, to new life in Christ. I absolutely love that God chose this imagery because there's something tangible that happens and you remember stuff. It's like God knew, you know, if I just tell them this is what's happening in your life, they're going to say, okay, I mean, I kind of get it. But it's like God knew, sometimes I need to speak to them like they're kindergartners. And what do we do with kindergartners? Everything's hands-on. I taught preschool for a very long time, and it's very touchy-feely. Sensory. We had sensory stations everywhere, because what do little kids want to do? They want to pick it up. They want to touch it. They want to, oh, what does this do? Oh, because you can tell them, if you put that in that water, it's going to get wet. And what does a little kid do? Really? And they want to put it in the water because they want to see it get wet because it's experiential. So he knew that we're experiential. And so he said, okay, you know what? Let's seal the deal for you in your brain, in your heart, in your mind. And I want you to do what everybody else has been doing because all these religious people know that if you change who you're following, then you have to show it to everybody. Like it's not just, I've decided to change and I'm just going to keep it to myself. No, they were very out there. And they would say, I'm following this person I'm going to show everybody. And the Jews understood that the Gentiles had to, not really prove it, but they had to go through this rite of saying, I'm going to wash everything away. I'm going to make it new. So Jesus said, this is what you know. I'm going to make it better. I'm going to, I'm going to do one better for you. And I'm going to show you that you're going to act out what I just did. And I absolutely love that. So if Jesus has told us to go and make disciples, he links those together. Go make disciples and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit with this process that gives physical expression to what is happening in the heart and mind in a beautiful way with Jesus telling them, lead people to me to follow me in death so that they may live. Let's look, because I would like to show you guys the very first time that the disciples decided to follow through with the Great Commission. If you would turn with me to Acts chapter 2. We're going to be looking at verse 36. And while you get there, let me set this up for you. It's the day of Pentecost, and the disciples have been praying and waiting in the upper room. There's about 120 of them at this point. When the promise of the Holy Spirit had come and filled all those who were there, and they began speaking in tongues and other languages. Confusion has broken out among those who heard the commotion. Some even thought they were drunk, but it was only 9 o'clock in the morning. So all of this leads up to Peter standing up and preaching his very first sermon. I'm pretty proud of Peter at this point because Peter has had some sketchy moments. And I love this point in time because I see, man, God really does redeem us. And there is nothing that we can really mess up too much that God won't say, you know what, I've got you and I'm going to use you. So Peter stands up and he's preaching and he's explaining the gospel of Jesus Christ to this growing crowd of Jews and so we're going to pick it up. This is towards the end of the sermon. He preached for a very long time. I'm not going to read his entire sermon. Even Luke doesn't record the entire sermon because it was a little lengthy. So we're going to pick it up in verse 36. So let everyone in Israel know for certain that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, to be both Lord and Messiah. Peter's words pierced their hearts, and they said to him and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter replied, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
This promise is to you, to your children, and to those far away, all who have been called by the Lord our God. Then Peter continued preaching for a long time, strongly urging all his listeners, save yourselves from this crooked generation. Those who believed that Peter, what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day, about 3,000 in all. That's a pretty cool way to start the church right there. Can you imagine 3,000 baptisms? Okay, that's a lot of people, first of all, but a lot of people to um, cycle through. Granted, they didn't have a big bathtub, so they go to wherever, whatever river. I'm not sure the location at the moment. Jerome would have like charts and maps and graphs. I don't have that. But 3,000 people. Can you imagine the celebration that ensued that day? Cheering, whooping, hollering, people saying, I'm changing my life because of Jesus. And what's amazing to me, this is a crowd of Jews. This is a crowd of people who have been looking for Messiah, but hadn't yet thought they found him. Jews who believed that baptism was a Gentile thing wasn't a Jew thing. This was a Gentile thing. This is a way for them to break away from their Gentile past. And now these Jews are finding Messiah. They're breaking away from their Jewish past and they're believing in Christ. And I absolutely love their response. Brothers, what should we do? One author describes the scene this way. When these Jews accepted baptism in the name of Jesus on hearing Peter's message, it was traumatic and significant for them in a way that we in our mildly Christianized culture have difficulty understanding. But as a result of Peter's preaching, about 3,000 took the revolutionary step of baptism. This wasn't just a, I think I'll do this, and somebody getting baptized. This was mind-blowing for the people watching. This was a huge moment for these people because they're breaking away from their culture, from everything that they've known because of Jesus. Because, they, because the gospel has so completely altered their thinking because they have encountered the one who died for them and was raised to life. This is why today is a thing. This is why we baptize. This is why we have entire Sundays that we set aside for this right here. Because Jesus said so, and because we're proclaiming to the world, I'm new, I'm different, I belong to Christ, he's changed everything about me, and I'm going to follow him. I'm dying with Christ. I'm being raised to new, to new life with him. Baptism isn't merely a formality or a box to check off on a Christian to-do list. And if you get anything today, hear this. Baptism is obeying Christ and taking your faith public because he has changed your life, because he has made things different, and because you want to follow him. The public part of this is key. Baptism starts your life off with Christ with a big splash. Everyone sees you. You're soaking wet, dripping. You can't hide that. Like, you can't just kind of, like, get baptized and walk away and be like, nothing happened. I'm just drippy. It rained right here. No, it's, like, it's one of those, like, everyone's going to see it. They're going to know. You're dripping. You're soaking. It's your start of a new journey and it's pretty beautiful. Throughout the book of Acts, we see it almost as an immediate response to believe in Christ. Peter said it, believe and be baptized. We hear it in other places, believe, be baptized. We heard it with Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch who he stopped his cart, chariot, whatever he's riding in, and says, I should be baptized right now. I mean, they're, they're in the middle of driving down the road, and he's like, look, water, let's do this thing now. I need to change. I need, because your heart responds. When Jesus changes your life, things change, and all of a sudden, you want to respond. You want to say, I'm going to follow him. Jump in the water. Don't mind if I do. So other people might find it crazy, but it's kind of what we do. Like, following Jesus, it's not the norm. It's a little bit countercultural. Jumping in water because Jesus says, come on in, the water is great and I'm going to change your life, is totally worth it because Jesus said so. 
and because we're taking our faith public. It's how we declare to the world, I believe him, I'm going to follow him. So what does that mean for everybody here today? Well, to quote a very wise man, believe and be baptized. I know it sounds very simple. When I was working on this message, I was like, this is really simple. But you know what? We don't need to complicate things. We don't need to add formulas. We don't need to make it big and grand. It's that simple. Peter's bringing the word to them, and he's, when they said, what do I need to do? He didn't lay out 15 steps for them. He said, believe and be baptized. Put your faith in Jesus Christ, God's son who put on humanity. He lived a life that we couldn't live, pure, holy, sinless. He gave himself up to death on a cross to pay for my sins, your sins, all for our forgiveness and our salvation to make it possible. He was raised to life again. He was dead in a grave three days, and God raised him to life. And that's what baptism is. It's being buried, dying to your sin, and being raised to new life in Christ. Now he lives in you. Woo! Boy, that makes me excited. Put your faith in him today. You don't need a formula. It's a simple process of crossing the line of faith. It's simply going from, I don't know about that, or I don't want to, to I believe. Not because it's in, you know, what somebody else believes, but I believe because it's what I believe, because it's what Jesus has done for me. And it changed everything. When you realize you need him and you begin believing, you'll find yourself in the same position as the Jews in our passage today. What do I need to do? My friends, if you haven't been baptized yet and you're sitting and you're not sitting, you know, wearing one of these spiffy little shirts, but you know in your heart that you believe that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, and today you want to say, I need to be baptized. Today's your day. You have just sat through our baptism class. Congratulations. You all have graduated. Well done. If that's you today and you have not been baptized yet, today's your day. We have a spiffy t-shirt that we'd be happy to give you that you can commemorate this day. And we would love for you to come over and see Pastor D and say, hey, I want to be part of that. Anyone is welcome. I'm putting that out there for you to know right now. Anyone is welcome. Today can be your splashy, glorious day. But for those of you who have been baptized, my challenge to you is to celebrate with these who are taking their faith public today. Celebrate and rejoice at what God is doing in their lives and in the church. Praise God he is moving on lives. And what really excites me is that what Peter said, this is for you, for your children, and those who are far away. We have little people getting baptized today. And that so excites me to see children hearing God's voice and saying, he's changed my life too. Because I believe God speaks to children. God spoke to me when I was an itty bitty thing. And I believe he's speaking to our children. And it's so exciting to see them say, you know what? I want to start my life believing in Jesus, walking with him. Not just because my mommy told me I need to be baptized. Not just because, but because Jesus said so. They do enough because mommy says so. Because daddy says so. They're doing this because Jesus said so and because Jesus changed their life. And it's so exciting. And lastly, I want to encourage you who have believed and been baptized, keep your faith public. Sometimes after our hair dries and we've had some distance from our own personal splash zone, it becomes easy to calm it down, brush up on our acceptable Christian behavior, and maybe not be as public with our faith. I'm not saying everyone needs to be crazy John and running around with, you know, camel hair vests and eating bugs. Although, if you've still had cicadas near your house, have at it, I hear they're scrumptious. But you don't have to go to that extreme. But wouldn't it be amazing if one of the first things people knew about you was that you love Jesus? Not because you're being pushy and not because you're saying, you need to love Jesus. You need him. You're a sinner and you're dying and going to hell. Maybe it's because when they get to know you, you're so excited and you're like, man, let me tell you. I would not be here today without Jesus. 
how did I make it through COVID and 2020 and 2021, which wasn't all that much better. How did I make it through all that? Let me tell you about Jesus. Because let me tell you what, my Jesus was there. He walked with me through this. He walked with me through that. I watched this happen and God was there. I was never alone. Can you imagine what would happen if that's how our Christianity was, if it was all out there in public? Loving, kind Christianity, my faith in Jesus, not me scolding other people or telling other people how they're getting it wrong. Because let me tell you, I get things wrong all the time. But that's not my faith. My faith is not in me getting things right. Because if my faith was in me getting things right, I wouldn't be here. And, and there would be no purpose in this because it would be all about me. But it's not all about me. It's all about the one who did it because I couldn't. So keep your faith public. Let your hair stay wet a little bit longer. And get out there and love on people. And let them know, whoo, Jesus changed my life. Let me tell you all about it. That's obeying Christ and taking your faith public. Baptism is just the start. It's just the beginning of following Christ and loving on people. May we be encouraged in our faith today as we celebrate, celebrate Baptism Sunday. So, let's do this. Pastor Angela. I have to be the microphone holder. You're fine. Don't drop it. Do you want me to hold it? You can hold. It's not going to electrocute I'm like, you. Is this it's thing a battery. Electrocute me? <laughs> it's just a battery. I think you'll be fine. <laughs> okay. I'm just kidding. Anna Dawson. Anna Dawson, how old are you? Eight. And how old were you when you asked Jesus into your heart? Seven. Seven years old. Do you believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose again on that third day? Yes. And you have asked Jesus into your heart and you know what it means to be saved and, and baptized? Yes. And do you promise to follow Jesus all the rest of your life? Yes. Okay. Brentley Campins. Brentley, how old are you? Eight. Eight years old. And how old were you when you asked Jesus into your heart? Seven. Seven. Do you believe that Jesus died for you on the cross and rose again on that third day? Yes. And you understand what it means to be baptized? Yes. And do you promise to follow Jesus with all your heart the rest of your life? Yes. In your profession of faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Jackson, how old are you? Ten. And how old were you when you asked Jesus into your heart? Six. And do you believe that he died on the cross for your sins and rose again on that third day? Yes. And you understand what it means to be baptized? Yes. And do you promise to follow Jesus with all your heart all the rest of your life? Yes. On your confession of faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Riker Campins. Riker, how old are you? Six. Eight. Seven. You're, are you sure? What? Are you sure? Yeah. You're seven. Yeah. And how old were you at when you asked Jesus into your heart? Seven. Seven. You actually just asked Jesus into your heart recently after vacation Bible school. That's awesome, buddy. That's awesome. You believe that Jesus died on the cross and rose again on that third day? Yes. And you know what it means to be baptized? Yes. And you promise to follow Jesus with all your heart, all the days of your life? Yes. That's on your profession of faith. I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Holy Spirit. The Father, the Son. Sorry. I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Pastor Josh is going to come now. I'm not trying to wear leather in there, so. <laughs> All right, May, would you go ahead and make your way up? Um, do you, have you accepted Lord into your heart as your Lord and Savior? Yes. And um, do you here today in front of this church and friends and family uh, proclaim that Jesus is Lord and will be for the rest of your life? Yes. All right. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Corbin. It's a little bit of a drop there. <laughs> All right, Corbin, have you accept Jesus into your heart as your Lord and Savior? Yes. And do you today before all of these people, this church, friends, family, proclaim that you are his and will be forever? Yes. All right. Corbin, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right. Okay, I don't know about you guys, but I'm just, that's so exciting to me, to be part of watching teenagers and young people and children committing their life to Christ and saying, it's on, I'm his. Praise Jesus for that. We are going, yeah, let's give it, let's praise God one more time, because that's exciting, so exciting. 